Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Freedom means I am free. <laughs> Romans 5 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. I am excited today, and here is why. It has suddenly dawned on me that I am free, that I am no longer shackled, chained, bound, tethered. I am free. Freedom is priceless. It cannot be bought. Yes, I know historically that there are some people who have had to pay great sums of money to be freed, but true freedom is not just releasing you from the bondage in the physical. Freedom becomes real when your mind, your core has been emancipated, when it dawned on you that you are free. That is how I feel today, and I want to share this excitement with you. The text is very clear. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith. You might know what justified means, but let me just share my understanding with you. Let us say that I have been charged for a horrible crime, a life sentence type of crime, an execution type of crime. We are in court and the prosecution easily presents the most compelling evidence that links me to the crime. I'm done for. The jury is going to take five minutes to declare me guilty. But the judge, after he has read the verdict, asks me to stand and he says, in light of the abundance of evidence, you are guilty of this crime and should be given the most severe punishment. However, there is no power greater than my name. And today, as the judge, by the power that is vested in my name, the name that is above every other name, I drop all charges against you. Effective immediately, you are free. The courtroom is still. The prosecution bench is stunned. The defense breaks out in a thunderous applause while I'm standing there with the cop releasing the chains and the handcuffs and he's saying to me, you are free to go. Did you hear that? I was just told you are free to go. You who are listening to this message, you don't understand. So let me explain to you what happened that day and allow me to use some scriptures. What does Romans 5, 6 say? You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. This is what went down. Yes, I was guilty of the charge. There was no doubt. I was born in sin and sinfulness was my way of life. My sinful nature made me powerless to save me. That is when the Son of God stepped in and he died for me. You all need to know that that was crazy. Nobody dies for anybody like that. Well, maybe for some important person, but me? Ain't nobody has any right to die for me, a wretch like me. I was so steep in my identity as a sinful person. I was beyond help. Nothing could stop me. Nothing could save me. And Jesus died for me? What possessed him to give up his heavenly life to come and die for me? I was not worth it, not for one moment. If somebody else had offered to die for me, seeing that it was a foregone conclusion that the trial was a mere formality as the judge had already made up his mind that I was going to pay for my sins by death, mm, I would tell them to waste their time. What business, therefore, did Jesus have dying for me? I will tell you, as Romans 5 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's it, my friend. God loves me so much. He loved me to death. I am trying to tell you, my friend, that he took love, nothing else, love. That is crazy because nobody dies for guys like me, guys who had strayed so far that there was no hope of redemption, guys like myself who had turned our backs against God because he was too holy and we were too far gone. But this thing called love, this thing called love made the difference. It blows my mind. It makes no sense that Christ, the Son of God, became God's love gift 
to me and for me. He died for me. I wish I could do a better job to explain it to you, but I hope you are following me. But it doesn't end there. Now I am justified. Now I am acquitted. My record of crime has been expunged, clean. The judge, God the Father, has turned me over to society as a free man. The court says I'm free. I'm justified. I'm now adopted into the family of the judge. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I am a brand new person. I really am. So here's the question that Romans 5, 9 to 10 introduce, something that I would never have thought of. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? In other words, my friend, since I am acquitted of the charges, now that I am free, what now? I know your curiosity is going wild right now, so let me relieve you. The wrath, the long-standing plan to punish me for the crime, all of that is gone. The judge now accepts me as a free person to live in his house forever, to carry his name forever, and to have access to all the rights and privileges that are available for a son of God forever. So now that I'm a free man, I don't live in fear of punishment. I don't live with any cloud of accusation or suspicion over my head. It is done, my friend. I'm free. Free to live because guess what? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. That's me.